Turbine. I am back. Uh, drove down after work last night and uh, yeah, got in not too late, got a good night's sleep and just went for a little jog this morning and I'm feeling good. I spent most of the day today with dad just kind of nutting out the logistics of the new course because there is a new course. <laughs> I got about a foot of snow down here yesterday so yeah, it's a little different to what we we're expecting, but look, the honest truth is it could have been much worse. Um, still looks like it's going to be a pretty fun race. So yeah, I think we're all sorted. Just finished prepping dinner, um, chow down on that in a little bit, and then hopefully get a good night's sleep, wake up tomorrow morning, ready to do this thing. I'm keen. I'm <laughs> feeling pretty fit. So that's only one piece of the puzzle, but it's an important one. So hopefully... The rest falls into place, but uh, I guess that's what we sign up for. Hope for the best and uh, one foot in front of the other. Keen. This is race day. Well done, keep, keep smiling, well done. Good job. It's got 22 k's in now. So far so good, but it's kind of what you need at this point of a miler. There was so much snow at the top. It's fun. Just heading down to Guthaga now. Coming up on 40 k's now, one quarter of the way. <coughs> yeah, I mean, I think the way these things sort of go is you start out feeling good and it's sort of just a slow demise to the finish line. And uh, I expect today to be no different. However, I guess things are going according to plan so far. What do we got? Three hours, 50 minutes so far. That's okay. Moving pretty well. Back to it. Ow. How far? Thirteen point nine. Thirteen point six. About an hour. I need one of those back. How's everybody? Jules. Can I have a caffeine one? Just have one. Chips. How's everybody today? Biscuit. Chips, salt. No. That's some rubbish is for you. I love yeah. rubbish. Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. And there. And there. Oh. Oh. Am I all done in here? Yeah. Yep. Ah. Whew. 60 clicks in the bank. This is a ridiculous sport when having done 60 clicks, I still got 100 more to go. <laughs> anyway, all is well. Carry on. Hey. Hello. How's everybody? Good. Okay. How far to? 22. Two and a quarter hours. Um, you will. Want some coke? Yeah. A bit. Skills. One more caffeine one. 
It's here. It will be in here. Um, you want some kind of know? Um, not just yet. Maybe later. <laughs> <laughs> 87 k's in now huh. starting to bite a little bit but i still feel like i'm moving okay <clears throat> i had a little uh cramp episode earlier <laughs> just my doctor and I thought that was me for the day, but it seems to come good. Hopefully it stays like that. <laughs> uh, 90 Ks, paddle from there to here. <laughs> Carry on. 107, just gone 10 hours. Things are getting a little bit hurty. <laughs> and that was the last thing that I filmed from the weekend. <laughs> look, I said from the outset that the Cozy Miler was going to be about racing first. And look, this whole video has been a bit of a mashup of things that my dad and Sarah and I all filmed. So hopefully it's somewhat of a coherent picture of how the day went. But from here on in, my job with the camera was done. There was some hurting to be had and racing to be done. <laughs> me done. Cozy Myler. <laughs> if that wasn't clear, I came third. <laughs> Which is absolutely bonkers. Never in a million years did I think I was gonna walk away with a podium place. Uh, and look, again, results, uh, you know, dependent on who turns up, who else turns up, and how they race. So, look, indifferent to that. Uh, but I was stoked with how I raced. Look, I put a lot of work in and ultra running is cruel in the way that that doesn't always guarantee you a, a good race. But for me at least, on the weekend that I just had, it all sort of came together and I had arguably one of my best races. Ran consistently the whole day. I was patient at the beginning and ran the second half with the with the mentality of don't be a wimp. <laughs> so often I find myself walking hills and choosing to conserve energy, but yeah, on Friday I chose to go all in and it, it worked out for me. Um, I don't think of myself as any particularly talented runner or deserving of any accolades or podium finishes, but I'll certainly take them when they come my way. <laughs> and particularly in a race like the Cozy Myla, because it means I'm going to UTMB next year. <laughs> Look, that's been a dream of mine since I even started thinking about trail running and uh, a podium finish in the Cozy Myla guarantees me entry into the race next year. So Sarah and I have been furiously planning and looking at accommodation and flights and all the, all the necessary logistics to make that happen. But believe you me, come September next year, I'm gonna be in Chamonix. <laughs> oh dear, what a weekend. 
Okay, I hope that was kind of fun to watch. Uh, I had a fun weekend, and these videos are always fun to make. Um, I guess that's it. Uh, what I will leave us with though this time is this little golden nugget that I found on my GoPro uh, just before when I started sifting through the footage. My dad is a legend. He's crewed me in most of my ultras and uh, he's a flawlessly organized uh, crew and yeah, I guess has some useful insights into his approach to, to make that happen from his side. So I'll leave you with that. I'm done. Uh, I'm going to put my feet up, drink some more beers, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> well, the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, another saying is it takes a crew to get a miler through their miles. Um, it's a pretty simple job. You just need to be at the right place at the right time with everything that the runner needs. Be organised enough so that the runner can um, come in, get what he needs and get out as quickly as possible. The information that uh, Luke has uh, required is to know how long before he gets to the next checkpoint and how many kilometres is. It's really all he's interested in and accordingly as the support crew I just need to have that information on hand and available to him. To get that information, I need to plan out the run in between each of the checkpoints, get Luke to estimate the pace that he'll do, and then work out the timing, both in, in minutes between the, uh, the checkpoints and also the time of day. As a support crew, I also need to work out how long it's going to take me to get from one checkpoint to another via the roads, not obviously not on the running route. And then that allows me to work out how much spare time I've got to set up and get myself prepared so that when Luke comes in, he can get what he needs and get out as quickly as possible. The strategy that I use is to work out how the checkpoint works and be as close to the entrance as possible so that Luke sees me is the first thing. I can then give him his supplies and also give him directions as to which way he needs to go and any information, particularly how long before the next checkpoint and how many kilometres. It's been working well. This is Cosy Myler, and Luke is running about 45 minutes ahead of schedule. So I'm expecting him in at the Sweat checkpoint at about 8 pm. Sarah's running with him to keep him company and keep his spirits high. But all in all, he seems to be going very well at this point in time, and uh, I'm sure he's well pleased with all of the training that he's done and the results that it's produced. Talk to you later. Thank you.